haven't warned about you They said that just one look and I'd get caught too Cause there's something about you Hey guys, it's Kira and welcome to another vlog. I'm just having the most incredible evening after the longest possible day I could have ever had. For anyone that doesn't know, if you didn't watch my last vlog, I announced that me and Jay were getting married, which we did just yesterday, which was incredible, but also just such a busy and full on day. And we had a pretty low key wedding. There were only like 21 people and us. It was just like a registry office wedding and then like a family meal. So it wasn't anything like big or crazy. But I think for me and Jay, who are quite introverted and usually avoid parties at all costs, even that still felt like quite like an intense day. So we had that day, which was incredible. I'm afraid I didn't film anything at all yesterday. I definitely intended to, but obviously days like that just fly by. So I will share any other videos, clips or photos that I've got from other people just so you can see the vibe of the day. But in general, it was a really, really lovely day and so fun to yeah, get married, kind of crazy to say that, but we did it, so that was yesterday. We got home fairly early because like I said, it was a low-key day, went straight to bed because our alarm this morning went off at 3 a.m., ready for us to pack up the car, set off at 4 a.m., drive from Leeds to Dover, which was just about five hours of driving, get the ferry across from Dover to Calais, and then drive for probably about another four hours from Calais to Troyes in France, which is where we are right now in the most lovely Airbnb, which I feel like is the perfect place to unwind after such a long day of travel. It has this gorgeous balcony. I'm sitting out looking at just like fields and trees. It's so peaceful. And my favorite thing about this particular Airbnb is that we pulled up and there are two chickens just wandering around the garden. There is like a gingery looking chicken and then one that is like a darker brown one. We asked the host what these chickens are called and they are called praline and noisette, which I believe is hazelnut in French. So I feel like hazelnut and praline are such fun names for chickens. And for me, that was absolutely the highlight of arriving here. But yeah, we're just starting to unwind and then the rest of our trip. So we're here for just over three weeks, not here specifically, but on our holiday slash honeymoon for three weeks um, and tomorrow we're setting off to I guess like officially kickstart the trip tonight is kind of like just a stepping stone to recoup and basically just because we couldn't physically drive any further in one day but tomorrow we're setting off to drive to Chamonix in the French Alps and that is where we start the proper trip and the rest of the three weeks are going to be camping so we definitely intend to make the most of a proper bed and a proper shower tonight because the next three weeks are going to be a little bit more like rural and yeah fingers crossed good campsites because last year we did a a similar trip had some great campsites but it's always a bit of a gamble so I'm keeping my fingers crossed but also definitely gonna wash my hair and make the most of a proper shower tonight just in case but yeah I feel like it's been a very full-on couple of days but it's all gonna be balanced out because obviously although yesterday was so sociable the next three weeks is pretty much just gonna be me and Jay wandering around enjoying nature and having a great time so I feel like it balances out and brings us back into equilibrium as a couple of introverts who don't usually do that much socializing and we are now so excited to be on our honeymoon slash holiday. I feel like I'm the sort of person who finds things like the word honeymoon or like when you get engaged and you have to say the word fiance, I find things like that so cringe. So honeymoon is, but like really it's just a big fat summer holiday, which we are so excited about. Um, moving on though from where we are and what we're doing, I have a lovely reading update as well because the beauty of a very, very long driving day is of course lots of time for reading and I've already managed to tick off my first read, which was The Bay by Ali Reynolds. If any of you watched my last vlog, you'll know that this was a book that I was halfway through reading and had hoped to finish before setting off on this holiday, but obviously didn't end up doing it. So I was about halfway in when we got into the car this morning and I managed to finish it by the time we were a couple of hours into the French side of our drive. It was the perfect book, I think, for such a long journey because it was a thriller and the second half was just so full of action that I absolutely loved it. it blue by in a flash and I think this was such a fun thriller because in a lot of thrillers there is like a single crime or criminal doing something and you're trying to like figure it out but there is definitely like a good side and a bad side whereas in this book everything became so intertwined and all of the characters had such 
foggy morals that at the end of it you kind of didn't know who you were rooting for or if you were rooting for anyone because everything was just so all over the place and there were good parts but also very much bad parts of all of the characters it was just really interesting to read because there was just so many twists and turns and I really really liked it gave it three stars because I feel like the ending probably could have been a little bit clearer or better tied up. It definitely left it with a few like open-ended questions, but on the whole, very entertaining and a really, really interesting fast-paced thriller. Definitely would say the second half was more interesting than the first, but I think that's probably true of most thrillers because you have to put in the groundwork in order to be invested to see where it all turns out. But yeah, really, really enjoyed that. And then moving on to my next book, which I'm planning to read, which is A Court of Frost and Star light by Sarah J Mass, which will kickstart a big summer of fantasy reading because the vast majority of the books that I've brought on this holiday are fantasy and romanticy books so I've got A Court of Frost and Starlight first which I'm very excited for first of all just to dip back into the world of Akatar and also just because I feel like this one is going to be an Akatar book but a little bit of a different vibe because it is a short story just over 200 pages and I think it's set at Christmas time so I feel like it's going to be probably a lot more light-hearted and just fluffy than potentially some of the other books in the series and considering that I think A Court of Wings and Ruin which was the previous book in the series was probably the dark one so far I feel like this will be like a really like a light entry back into the series and I'm just excited to reconnect with all of these characters so that's the book that I'm going to be reading next and I'm planning to pick that up this evening probably just enjoy a few hours sitting on this balcony and soaking in the beautiful weather and the beautiful scenery because this is just so gorgeous I can't get over it so welcome to another vlog and tomorrow we'll be setting off to Chamonix and of course I'll bring you along and share the reading updates as we go Vitamins and history books Psychology and a different way to look at it all Cause my perspective is broken If suffering's a way to earn your key I better start putting miles on my feet But I'm so tired of wandering Yeah, I'm lost But I'm living We've had our first full day in Chamonix, which is just the most beautiful location. Today is a Sunday, so we did a little walk this morning. I say little, it was still quite a lot of like hill walking, but I suppose like for what we're gonna be doing over the next few days, it was maybe just like a gentle introduction into walking in the area. And then we also headed off to a sports bar because today was an F1 race day and Jay does not miss any of the F1 races. So we watched that and then have come back to the campsite. So ready for a little reading update because although I haven't done any reading yet today, yesterday was actually <laughs> Jay's taking pictures of me in the background. Um, today was, yeah, no reading today, but yesterday, which was a pretty much heavy driving day, was a great day for getting started on A Court of Frost and Starlight, of which I'm now on page 159. So I've only got a little section left at the end to read and I'm hoping to finish that off this evening. I will say that this book has been a bit of a slower start than any of the other books in the series. But I kind of expected that as it is just a little like additional novella as opposed to like a major part of the story but now that I'm over halfway it's definitely picking up pace a little bit and I do feel like this book is intentionally bridging the gap from our main character being Feyre into the story that is coming next which is going to be much more focused on Nesta so we have a lot more introduction into the fact that after the war in the court of Wings and Ruin um, Feyre and Elaine and the rest of the sort of like inner circle are all kind of stuck together but Nesta is living very much a solitary life away from the rest of the group which means that she is kind of I guess like just isolating herself completely and I feel like that is obviously going to be where we pick up with her story because she is just living a completely different and separate life in 
Prithian than everyone else so I feel like it's going to be an interesting one but it's setting up to uh, winter solstice and they're all sort of like gathering around together. It's also been fun because there is like multiple perspectives from this book whereas typically we've just had most of the story coming from Feyre's perspective but in this one we've had some story from Feyre's perspective, from, some from Reese, and also some from like Moore and Cassian and Azrael so I feel like we're getting a little bit more of everyone in this story as opposed to just Feyre's perspective which is quite impressive considering how short the book is overall so with that said I'm gonna do some more reading this evening and then I think Jay has planned a pretty mega day of walking for us to do tomorrow so of course I'll catch up with you then and see what we end up doing. Today we started our walk up here which is the highest place that we could get a cable car to on this side of the mountains and um, it got us up to I think about 2,500 meters and now we're walking across the mountain range to like an animal wildlife park where you're supposed to be able to see some of the cool alpine wildlife which fingers crossed I really want to see a marmot we're staying at a campsite called Camping Le Marmot and I just really want to see one slash steal one and take it home because they just look so cute but I thought I'd give a quick reading update as well because last night I did manage to finish off a quart of Frost and Starlight. Rated it three stars, I'd say I'm on the whole my least favourite book in the series so far but I kind of expected that given the fact that it is obviously just a little novella but it was a nice story so glad to have finished it. Then I definitely felt like it was either a choice of basically going straight onto the next book in the Akatar series or picking something different and I decided to go for something different and started my reread of the Game of Thrones series because Jay's only brought one book with him, he's currently reading Dune um, and I figured that he might want to read Game of Thrones when he's finished with Dune and so I didn't want us both to be trying to read that at the same time so I figured I would get a jump start on that, start Game of Thrones. I read a few chapters last night and it was just such a great introduction to the series. I love the story and I feel like it reminds you of the heyday of the Game of Thrones series when the first few seasons were just so so good whereas obviously as we all know it takes a bit of a downfall towards the end but the first few chapters, especially the first chapter which is all about the Stark children finding the dialogue wolves I just absolutely love it so I started that last night can't wait to read more later I also checked and it was 2019 when I first read that book so it's been five years so even though I've obviously watched the tv series a few times and I have read the book before it kind of feels like I'm reading it for the first time because it's been so long so obviously enjoying these absolutely spectacular surroundings for the day and then back to the campsite later to do some reading like dancing on a wire Oh how I try to make you stay Won't you stay Won't you stay <laughs> trying to make the most of it by doing one of the things that is on all of the list of things that you have to do when you visit Chamonix which is to come up on a like 
what is it called, like a cog train, and then you end up going to this place called Nerdaglass, which is a like ice cave glacier thing. So on the cable card to go and see that now, and I think it should be very, very cool. Just immediately when you get up here, it feels much, much colder than it is downtown, where it is so, so hot. So very excited to go and see that, see what it's all about. And the rest of the day, I don't really know what I'm planning to do, but we'll just see. But the ice cave is definitely the main thing on the agenda today. <laughs> I'm now on page 256 of Game of Thrones, which means I'm about a third of the way through. And I feel like I can confidently say that I believe that this is one of the strongest first books in a series that I've ever read. I feel like a lot of book series are like interesting enough to make you want to continue, but they often feel like they're putting in a lot of the like foundational groundwork. And so when you compare them to later books in the series, they just never seem as good. And they're often a bit shorter and just generally a bit more dull but like I say good enough to want to make you continue but this book is nothing like that I just feel like it is such a strong start it really throws you in rather than like I think a lot of books have this method of like filling you in with loads of detail whereas I feel like the way that this book unfolds with different chapters from different characters perspectives the way that you learn information about the world just feels very organic and yet you still have lots of like action and intrigue so it just feels like such a strong start to the series and another thing that I'm really enjoying about it because obviously House of the Dragon is now on its second series and I'm just obsessed with that show I'm noticing a lot more references to things about the Targaryen history and the Dance of the Dragons and things like that that the first time I read this book I probably would have just like glanced over or not really paid much attention to but this time around I'm seeing like names of dragons and things that are just obviously a lot more like recognizable to me so that's like a fun little thing that I've noticed and it also I think just hammers home how much thought that George R. R. Martin had put into this entire series and it's not like he wrote it and then realized later on that he was like oh yeah I really like the Targaryens I'm gonna write more about their history like this was all stuff that he had thought about and like given full like histories to back when he was writing the first book in the 90s which I think is just crazy to think about how much detail and like forethought he'd put into all of the planning so absolutely loving it cannot wait to read more and today is our last day well actually yesterday was our last full day in Chamonix today is our travel day so we're leaving Chamonix this morning and heading off to our next campsite in Switzerland and I personally find that travel days are just my best reading days I know some people get travel sick and can't really read and drive at the same time obviously I'm not driving I'm the passenger I definitely can't read and drive at the same time but I know some people get travel sick not not for me I feel like no matter what the form of transport whether it be like car or ferry or train I just find it's my best place for reading because I don't get distracted and I can just get so much like undisturbed reading done so I'm hoping to make a good bit of progress with this book today and I guess the last thing to say about Game of Thrones at least is the fact that I I'm just the world's biggest Catelyn Stark hater. If she has a million haters, I'm one. If she has one hater, it's me. And if she has no haters, then I must be dead because I despise her with all of my heart honestly she is just a despicable character and I just can't get over the fact that she has managed to forgive and love Ned for what she sees as this indiscretion of him having cheated on her and had this like bastard child and she's able to look past that but then she takes all of that anger and resentment out on the child who is obviously an innocent in this and the way that she treats John at the start of this book knowing that he's like only 14 years old at the start of the book is just awful and there's this chapter where John is leaving to go and join the Night's Watch and he just wants to say goodbye to Bran and Catelyn is just awful to him tries to get rid of him and then when eventually she lets him stay and say goodbye to Bran he says his goodbyes and then he's leaving the room and Catelyn says John it should have been you about Bran's accident which I'm just like I know she's obviously dealing with a lot of emotional turmoil and if that was the only thing that she'd said maybe you could look past it but that's like 
a thing that she said after just years and years of like mistreatment and resentment that is just directed at the wrong person so hate Catelyn Stark absolutely hate her but on the whole loving Game of Thrones and cannot wait to read more like I say, yesterday was our last day in Chamonix. It was quite a chill one. We obviously went on the ice train and went to go and see the glacier, which was super cool, literally and figuratively. Um, it was obviously like really bizarre because you're in this like ice cave. And it's kind of melting because it's summertime, but it is so, so cold, which is very unusual given that obviously the rest of the place around is just hot no matter where you are, no matter how high up you seem to be, it's still boiling hot. So that was the first part of our day. Then we just went and explored a little bit more of Chamonix, went into this beautiful little bookshop where I saw a cool French copy of one of the Anne of Green Gables books um, and then while we were like browsing around this bookshop I came across a lovely viewer who worked there called Celine and that was so fun and just like such a like bizarre experience because I mean it's not like I <laughs> get spotted very often it's happened to me twice now but the weird thing is that both times it's happened it's been in a bookshop and it's been when me and Jay have been on holiday somewhere so the first time was a couple of years ago when me and Jay were in the Lake District for his birthday we were in like a Waterstones and someone was like oh my god do you have a YouTube channel which was just like the weirdest like out of body experience but I definitely didn't expect to see anyone in a bookshop that knew me in France in the middle of the Alps so that was a, such a cool experience and so lovely to meet her so that was really nice and then the rest of the day was just chilling out getting ready and packing up to move on to Switzerland today so with that said I hope you've enjoyed hearing all about Game of Thrones and all of our Chamonix adventures for the first part of this holiday it's definitely been a great start to the trip both in terms of our adventures and in terms of reading because I'm now on my third book of the trip but we'll catch up with you in the next one when we reach Switzerland mm -hmm.